Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. This is kind of a continuation of our last unboxing episode, but we have a couple new ones right here that we'll go over. And hey, even a new giveaway product that we'll talk about here in a minute. But first, let's open up this other used guitar before continuing where we left off last time. So this, it's a guitar that I've been like nonchalantly looking for. It's like nothing super crazily rare, but it's something that a lot of people likely don't even know exists. And it kind of ties in with what we were talking about a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, geez. <laughs> you know, I have not been getting as many packing peanut packages lately. Everybody's like switched over to bubble wrap or that brown packing paper. Even I've got myself some of that brown packing paper stuff. It makes the guitars weigh a little bit more in the package, but usually you're dim weighted so much anyways that it costs about the same. If you're ever curious why I have this giant trash can, it's because of packages like these. Limited mess packing peanuts. You just scoop some out. And then once you have some of that out there, you can do this little bouncy game. Basically what's happening, as you lift this up, it creates a void that the packing peanuts then fill. So there we go. Just in case you missed my early days of these unboxing episodes when I told you guys about that. But a chainsaw case. Chainsaw cases mean you always have something good. One, two, three. Big reveal time. What do we have here? It's hard to see, it's all black. So this is a, uh, a Generation 4 chainsaw case. Generation 4, they took all the padding out of the cases. <laughs> it's my least favorite iteration of the chainsaws. They even took the lid out of the case. And no padding in here, it's just bare bones minimum. No wonder they discontinued them. But this is what you're here for, the guitar. <gasps> Only one pickup! So this is like the earliest reissue of the Melody Maker. Because in the 70s, there were Melody Makers made. You can check out these reviews and demos that I've done of them. They were the double cut style. But as far as like a 59 style single cut Melody Maker, it's the mid 80s, kind of when the Norlin era ended and the Juskowitz era began, that they started redoing these, you know, kind of goofy looking Melody Makers. Sometimes you'll find ones that have like custom shop edition on them, just meaning that it was a limited edition run. I mean, this guy, it's from 1986, very late in the year. But I was talking in that Joan Jett Melody Maker video that they haven't done a proper reissue of these Melody Makers. And this still isn't it, because this guy ha actually has an ABR-1 bridge drilled directly into the top, historic spec style, with a tailpiece. But instead of it saying Melody Maker there, it's just completely cut off and we have a humbucker. I can definitely see why somebody would just take one of these out as their road dog. Now let's move on to our sponsored unboxing here. Definitely check your comments in the last video. I responded to five people with those free codes. Only one person has claimed it so far. But today's sponsor is Mellow Audio. They've actually sponsored two other unboxings and giveaways and videos. But this is something new that they're doing here. This is called the Mellow Audio TS Mini Audio Interface. Wow, this is interesting. See, I thought they were sending me like the same product but it looks like we've got something slightly different. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this thing. Cool. So it looks like it's just a miniature audio interface. So you can plug your guitar directly into it. You can also do like a mic'd up cabinet sample. Oh, it looks like it's a new trick locking jack. That's nice. And you also have headphones there. This is really portable. Usually uh, the audio interfaces, they're like at least a big box like that. I've now completed the trifecta. So if you're interested in winning one of these TS minis, all you have to do is like, comment, and subscribe. Read the full rules and description either in the pinned comment. Or and I look forward to uh, giving one of these things away. It, I, now I know what this thing reminds me of. It's one of those pies at McDonald's. Like it has the same type of swoop in there. Just, I knew this looked delicious for some reason. 
And now the not so exciting conclusion of the SG. That's why we had to wait until Tuesday because we were kind of finalizing the details. The shop just decided to take the return. So you'll probably see this back on Reverb. Hopefully it's advertised correctly this time now that they know there's an issue. But honestly, I'd gotten a pretty decent deal on it in the first place. So somebody should be able to still pick this up and be at an affordable player's price. I, it's a shame that I don't get to review the Elliott Easton Signature SG yet. Because apparently, I think somebody said there's like 144 of them were made. And like 44 of those were lefties because, you know, Elliott Easton, the guy from the cars, himself is a lefty. So that's kind of the cool thing about his signature guitars is there's usually lefty and righty versions, but the lefties sell for crazy premiums. So uh, maybe another day on this one. I'm too backlogged and other stuff to, you know, hurry up and get this review and demo done. But let's go ahead and get this one packed up. Our boxings and unboxings have merged. Just in case you missed the episode, what's wrong with this guitar is the truss rod's been maxed out. And after talking to a few other people, apparently that's very common on this model. Like all their truss rods max out and then you can't get any of the bow out of the neck. Some people try to heat treat them, but it just never works all the time. But let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. So last time I actually made a video about the Gibson branded case and the Zither company, they actually saw my review and they said, hey, we enjoyed your review. Let's send you the one you wanted. <laughs> oh, that was so nice of them. So no, this isn't sponsored. There's no giveaway or anything. This is just something they sent me as like a little thank you. But just in case you missed that video, this is like a really fancy, expensive, real wood guitar stand. But it's the Purple Heart version. Wow, I like the way this one feels. It's nice and smooth. It's not quite like that mahogany one. And I like this like walnut-like stripe down the middle. Nice. <laughs> Somebody put in a comment that they thought this was like a Nimbus 2000. <laughs> you could definitely use it for like a Halloween type thing. Oh man. This one even has a little bit of flame figuring within it. Nice. I think it would be really cool if uh, Gibson would make a Purple Heart Top Les Paul. I wonder if they can even do that. There might be uh, something about Purple Heart that makes it not a good top, but it'd be kind of a cool color, I think. And just a few other things that I learned about this company after saying things. I was just assuming that Zither was like this huge thing, but no, it's just a small family-run company. And apparently this design right here is very specialized. So it like works with your guitar as it swings so it will not fall. But I've definitely come to appreciate this stand when it comes to uh, nice B-roll shots. Gosh, that's just beautiful. Do you guys see the flamed figuring? I mean, it's not like crazy, but you know, it's a lot more than I got on that last one. Oh, and the other thing I learned is these are just string swing holders. You can also get these that just install into your wall. And the other thing I asked him to do is send me the bass version because occasionally I get a baritone guitar that just makes this look a little, little bit silly. For example, my uh, Buckethead Les Paul here, it just kind of dwarfs that stand to the point where it's like hardly even off the edge. And if it were to hit back, it would not actually be hitting any type of foam. So that's why you would need the bass stand for this guy. Doesn't that look much better? Nice. So thank you, Zither. You didn't have to do that, but I'm very appreciative of it. I love this Purple Heart version. And people were asking about the side to side motion. Like if something really knocks your guitar pretty good. I mean, if your dog or kid really goes into it, you know, gives it enough force. Yes, it's going to fall over. But, you know, just minor annoyances like this, it's going to be OK. Side to side, it also works pretty well as long as you got that in there nice and tight. And just out of complete curiosity, I mean, should you just buy the bass one, even if you have electric guitars? They're going to stand a lot taller up and look smaller in comparison. And uh, unfortunately, I would have to say no on that because the padding does not go up far enough. Use that information as you will. That's just kind of me thinking out loud and being curious myself. All right, let's get back to some guitars now. Do you guys want used or new? 
Let's go new. So the story with this one and the reason why I'm unboxing a new guitar, because right now what I'm thinking is I'll just do the new guitars as the unbox and then review and used guitars will just kind of stay my own because they typically have a little bit more history I have to teach about them. But I'm just kind of playing with my style. I'm sure I'll find something I'm happy with. But historically, every time I change my style up a little bit, the show gets, you know, higher production values and I end up getting, you know, twice as many subscribers. So, so it's just me kind of experimenting. We'll figure things out together. But inside here is one of the brand new Epiphones. And unfortunately, we are not going to see a review on this one. And it's not because it's, you know, preemptively damaged or anything. <laughs> It's because the person who ordered this through my new guitar day program, with the whole situation in the world, he wants his new guitar because he needs something to do while he's sitting at home. And I completely understand that. I'm just happy I actually got this guitar in in time for him to have it. A lot of these Epiphone models, I'm kind of done talking about them, except for like the cool ones. Like that SG one, I view that as cool. The SG Special, I think that's pretty cool. I think we've got the Firebird eventually. But things like the Explorer, I'm almost just thinking I'm just gonna list that one and not actually review it because I gotta get caught up somehow. But this guy is the Les Paul Custom and it's in white. Wow, what is going on here? What I'm noticing is like even through this, this is like a piercing white color. Usually Gibson's white is like slightly off white at the same time. Go ahead and get our big reveal here. Wow, that is pristine. I mean, look at this right under the light. If you want, you know, that pure white color, this guitar definitely has your back on that. So first impressions here, wow, that ebony fretboard on these guys, you know, it looks pretty cool. You even get a little bit of streakiness to it. That's nice. Fit and finish wise, it looks like you got a little bit of white running over the binding right there. That's nothing too crazy. You've got the same strange alignment of the tens. They really need to fix that. But yeah, this thing's actually looking nice because you can't actually see all those different seam lines. Oh wow, this was a uh, 2019 made in December. The big question though, is the frets, how are these guys? Looks like it's got that same fifth fret buzz. Sometimes you can get that out with just a little bit of relief in the neck. But if that's the only area, I think they've done pretty well on this. The only other thing that's kind of interesting is the binding is kind of like a bone color, whereas the guitar itself is like a crisp white. So it kind of gives it an interesting vibe. It's not quite the same as the Gibson iteration, but you know, finally having a proper Les Paul mixed with that headstock, it looks a little bit short in comparison because the headstock ends a little bit shallower, whereas the Gibson one goes up. Well, yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna have to pack this one up now. But again, I don't blame the guy because I am literally about one to two months out from unboxing, sometimes even worse than that. That's why most of the uh, people that do the new Guitar Day program, if it's not a guitar that I desperately need to review, I just have it sent to them directly. So I can still get you guys a discount if you're interested in a brand new guitar. But I don't always review it if I think it's gonna take too long. But I am finally starting to get caught up on, you know, the pre-sale orders. But let's go ahead and move on to our last unboxing of the day. This is kind of a, a long episode, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm not entirely too sure what's in this. I just know it's a used guitar and it's something kind of cool because there were two cool guitars that I bought that were used. The first one being the Elliott Easton model, which, yeah, unfortunately something happened with that. But this, what is in here? People have been packing excellently lately. I don't know if it's because they know that they're sending it to me and I'm gonna critique them, but look at this. That's a nice quality box. And they put these foam inserts here to act as a double box and then they've completely immobilized it. I remember almost every guitar I used to buy would be <laughs> packed like garbage. So maybe my influence has rubbed off a little bit. Oh, okay. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure this is what the title of this video is gonna be. The $3,000 question. So on my guitar hunting episode, there was once a guitar that was listed as a 1982, but none of the specs lined up. And I told you guys, I'm willing to bet, I think I was like 99% sure that this was actually a 1992. Because if this actually turns out to be an 82, a two-piece flame maple top 82 with the specs that this thing has, yeah, that would be worth quite a bit of money. What do we got going on here? Never seen that before, but that's not a bad idea. Take a look at this top. That is just explosive. I wish there was a little bit more of a brown edge. This is kind of more like the modern day fade finishes. They've just got it very lightly around the edges there, but that is a spectacular example. Well, yeah, this headstock screams the early 90s. Yeah. Okay, that's very clearly a nine, nine two zero two two three five two. I can see why that guy might have thought it's an eight though, because it was stamped a little bit heavily. I could probably give this guy a hard time, but I'm not into drama unless, you know, something is majorly wrong with the guitar. I mean, still, just as a 1992 model, this thing is in like near mint condition. It's still worth about $1,000 more than I paid for it anyway, so I'm happy. It does not have the original case. The knobs have likely been replaced. But strangely enough, it still has the original pick guard. So if you're interested in this, you can check it out on my reverb page. I don't know if I'll do a review because we just talked about a Custom Plus not too long ago, but it was not a separate review and demo. Let's go ahead and uh, move on to some boxings. Now we've got some pickups to pack up here. That's kind of like a tongue twister. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. <laughs> These are the pickups that I had pulled out of that Custom Plus that somebody had modded a while ago. I never even looked into what these things were, but somebody messaged me and said, hey, are those this or this? If it's that, I want it. And it just happened to be one of the ones that he wanted. It's the uh, Pearly Gates set. So I guess, you know, these are actually pickups I've heard of before. So let's go ahead and get these packed up and sent out. We even have original boxes here. Now we need to pack this one up to get it onto its new home. The Epiphone SG with the Maestro Vibrola Tremolo. This guitar has been quite the journey for me. It took a long time to film that episode due to me, you know, accidentally deleting the footage, but <laughs> it's all right. A lot of people hate this top veneer and I get it. I did too when I first saw it, but the more you see this in person, I think the more people will like this. And the reason why I think a lot of people don't like it is because they haven't actually seen a Gibson SG that does have this ribbon mahogany flame. Usually it's not quite this extreme, like you'll just see it on the back and it'll be kind of wavy. Those are some of the coolest SGs that you can find, but most of them don't look like that. So yeah, it's a bit over the top, but it is a beautiful guitar at this price point. On here, we've got another thing to pack up. What could possibly be inside this one? Oh, it's just an empty case. I always forget this back latch on this case. I'll be honest, I don't entirely remember the history of this one. I think what happened is this came to me with another guitar and I said, hey, this is a super rare case. I'm gonna keep it back for myself. And I think I listed it about two months ago because I just thought, why waste such a beautiful case? Because this burnt orange interior is really rare in the 70s. This is more kind of like a 60s vibe to it. So I thought it'd make like good B-roll shots or something, but I just recently started to do this and then somebody bought it. So it's kind of just a cool case for them and a rare interior color. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to enter that Mellow Audio giveaway contest and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.